an OF2. Well, F we just term was 4.0, and this is 3.2. Starting to do this from memory. Uh, oh, it's 3.4. 3.4. So the difference is 0.6. 0.6. That's good so enough. it's polar. So, so we've got the bond. So the bond check, and then the shape is bent 104.5. Those and so are that's usually work. polar. Yep. And this, is, this follows the same strikes as water. Same so as water. Yep. So this one's polar. So it's got the, he passed the bond check and the shape check. Okay. And then for sulfur trioxide, we're going to do the bond check and then the shape check test. All right, so will. bond first. So this is 3.4 and sulfur is 2.6. 2.6. Well, that difference is 0 0.8. 0 0.8, so, so it passes the bond check. Passes it's the than bond 0.5. check. But oh, the trigonal planar. When you're trigonal planar, guess what? The shapes cancel out. See how yeah. it's kind of symmetrical? Yeah. And so it does not pass the shape test, so this is nonpolar. Right. The, guys, look for symmetry. If it's symmetrical, including the unbonded pairs, you have to consider those. That's right. If it's symmetrical, if the same thing, if you will, is coming off the sulfur, so we got oxygens coming off the sulfur, those are all the same. It's symmetrical, it's going to be nonpolar. All right, sulfur dioxide. Mm -hmm. Okay, so sulfur dioxide. It's S and the O. So the yeah. the bond check because it's the same last. bond. It it's a check, check, but the shape test. It Notice is gonna it's pass. not symmetrical. Sulfur here has two oxygens, but it also has this unbonded pair. An unbonded pair of electrons is different than an oxygen. See, the center of negative charge would be here. So each of mm -hmm. these oxygens have a negative charge. So geometrically, the center is here. The center of positive charge is here. So that causes it. So this passes both tests. It's Therefore, polar. it's polar. And I think we've got yeah a couple more examples. I2. Yeah. Now, this one's linear diatomic, but That's it's the easy. same atom. The bond check. Negative. Negative, because I don't even know what the numbers are. We can look them up. But they're the same. It's 2.7, So, but 2.7 minus 2.7 is it's zero. zero. So, Anything that has, it's bonded to itself is yeah. non-polar. So he he passed, it doesn't pass that test. So right. And actually, the shape test, it, it does pass, by the way. It, because they're different atoms, and it's just it's just based on the bond if you've got a linear diatomic one. Yeah. And then HC, and this is the interesting yeah, this one. Looks fun. So well, let's talk about the bond test. Oh, we've got kind of a weird deal here. Hydrogen is 2.2. This was 2.2. This was 2. Point. Carbon is 2.6. 2. And nitrogen is 3.0. So the difference here is 0. 0.4, and the difference here is 0. 0.4. Okay, but so but yeah, but so this bond, this is a check. Well, look at the overall thing. Yeah, two point two to three point oh. Yeah, because really between here and here though, that's a a point eight. Hmm. So this actually does pass the bond test because you look at the external atoms. So this is a bit tricky, but you go back. Well, it's linear diatomic or triatomic, and on your shape paper it says that it is usually nonpolar. Guess what? This is polar, because on the shape. Because this is such a higher number, this is going to be the negative side, and this is going to be the positive side, because the electrons kind of get sucked over to this side because of the higher strength of the nitrogen. Yeah, higher electronegativity. Higher electronegativity, therefore, um, this is polar. So, you know, you have to kind of think it through a little bit sometimes. Yeah. But if you're, if you're stuck and you're either doing a worksheet or doing a test or something, just go with the usually, and yeah. you're most often going to be right. Yeah, so there's some exceptions. Yeah, there are and, some exceptions. And you're seeing what they are. So if you want an A, think it through. If you're shooting for the C, just go with it's on the sheet. Yeah, that's probably right. In practical terms. <laughs> I think that's it. Thank you, right. Oops. So the um, one of the practical applications of this, guys, is when you understand. So who cares if something's polar or nonpolar? Mr. Bergman, is that ice in water or is that water boiling? Boiling. See boiling point. That's true. It's bubbles. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people have asked that question. Yeah. My picture. Oh well. So the more pop. Why do we care about polarity? The the more polar a molecule, the higher higher the boiling point. So right. if you have something that's got very high polarity, it's going to have a higher boiling point. It makes right. bonds stronger. Right. That's like water. We're glad water's polar because we're mostly water. And so since it has a high boiling point, we can go out in the sun and not boil off. Yeah, it would be important. That's handy. Yeah. Okay. So that's why we care about polarity. And you, you're going to be asked to determine polarity um, based on the shapes. Now when I say something about polarity, I should make a note. You're trying to determine the polarity um, of a molecule. When I talk about a molecule, that's a non-metal to a non-metal. Right. So this does not apply.
to ionic, no, or metallic bonds. So polarity only applies to things that have covalent bonds right. or non-metal to non-metal. So kind of keep that in mind. All okay, right. kind of a long podcast, but hopefully you've learned a lot.